Tommy Curran, big week for you. How you doing? What happened to your voice? I don't know. What happened to my voice? You sound a little froggy. Oh, do I? Why? Ew, are you sick? Is it is it my Mahomes impression? Why is this a joke? What is this? Do I sound froggy? Do I sound oh, sick? Oh, maybe. No, it's kind of not a Mahomes thing, but I'm wasting your time and mine by bringing that up. No, so I, I, I about that. no, it's uh, doctor. I hadn't noticed that. Doctor Curran is diagnosing. Maybe I got a scratchy throat. I didn't even realize. Uh, so let me let me ask you this. And you you've come on these airwaves in the past, and you said. There's a lot of threads to pull at with Bill Belichick and his future and all the decision-making for Robert Kraft and how it ties in with the next head coach. And There's all these wheels in motion. Do the Patriots have the, the proper urgency? Does pa- Patriots' ownership have the proper urgency when it comes to getting all their ducks in a row to do what you reported earlier in the week? They're likely to do, move on from Belichick at the end of the year. Jonesy, it's a great question because I don't know what they're doing to mobilize in private. For instance, have they had a conversation with Bill Belichick? I legitimately don't know if they said, Bill, we are deciding to go in a different direction, or Bill, we're in the process of deciding, and this is which way we're leaning. Or dead silence, hi, Bill, hi, Robert, and then you're on your way. So that's the first thing. And then you have to have some kind of, as we've taken the saying, an elegant dismount for the situation. How do you do it without having it be messy? And then if you can get that done... Those two elements, well, then you figure out if you're moving on from Bill Belichick. Well, is it a firing? Is it a parting of the ways? How long are we going to hang this up? And are we going to try and get compensation in from whom? Meanwhile, the clock is ticking. You have to find a replacement. Is Gerard Mayo the replacement that you want? What's his vision for an offense? Is Bill O'Brien staying? Who's the quarterback going to be? How's the scouting department doing? Are the scouts going to stay in place for all the scouting that they've done for the last three months? Or are the people who are going to go to the East-West Shrine Bowl and the Senior Bowl and go to the Combine, are they going to be new? So there are so many things for the Patriots to cover. And that's why when we talked last week and I said this could be, and I was just spitballing, a seven- to eight-year process, that's because 2024, if you don't approach it the right way and you foot drag and you worry about sacred cows and not making decisions so the feelings aren't hurt, you're going to make it a protracted rebuild because you kind of just sashayed into the first year of it. So just for example, with the GM side, with the personnel side, because we've talked a lot about, at least on our show, about, hey, when when the coach is gone, here are some different options that you can go to for the coach in-house or elsewhere. But from a personnel perspective, once you get into the offseason, how quickly do they have to have their staff in place in order to get the ball rolling ahead of the combine, the draft, free agency, all of these really important points for the transition that they're going to be making? The ball has to be rolling now, Meg, honestly, because you've just spent the entire college football regular season scouting these players and having access to them and having access to their coaches and their campuses and the opportunity to find out more about them. So if it's a bowling alley, the ball is at least halfway down the lane. You need to. So that's why, you know, even when the Patriots came aboard and Belichick and Scott Pioli came aboard, Bobby Greer, the GM under Pete Carroll, stayed with the team through the draft. Now, is Matt Groh going to stay in place as the general manager or director of personnel, the guy who picks the players? Are the pro and college scouting directors going to stay in place? That all remains to be seen. The most likely scenario is that those individuals stay. But then that gets into the other conversation. Well, if Bill Belichick goes to, say, the Panthers, who's his GM? Does he want Matt Groh? Is there a a tug of war over Matt Groh. What's his contract status? That's why when I texted you guys, said, could we talk about this today? It's December 14th, and I think people are looking at this far away, four games. The season ends January 7th, and then it's like rats from a sinking ship in the coaching world. Everyone's going to try, you know, run for the lifeboats. Where am I going to land? What am I going to do with my family? You know, these people, you know, and I know that we get into the conversation about what happens these are many many individuals who are closer to your age and younger than to mine or bill belichick's this is a pressure-packed time in their lives where they'll need answers jack dawson said you should actually stay on the boat as long as possible because you don't (laughs) want to be in the icy water for very long before the lifeboats come (laughs) it's a great point but you drink you know there was a guy on the titanic the longest survivor 
drank his face off before he went in. And his body temperature didn't drop with the same rapidity of the other people. Smart. Really? Google it. Nice. Oh, I, I will. think he was Google a it. chef, right? I will. I will Google that. Uh, Rose. Rose, <laughs> so selfish. Was room, yes. Ro- Rose yeah, was so. Rose was so. Rose was so. Plenty of room on that door. Yeah, yeah, so much room on that door. I agree, Arkin. That's what I think. Uh, Tommy, you told Rich Eisen that uh, despite you know the, the report that you had, things could still change. Did you get a sense of what could cause uh, minds to change maybe uh, on this topic? Yeah, um, that was McAfee, but I'm you know, McAfee, not sorry. proofread yet. That's okay. That's more, you know, the impression I'd get wasn't that because of a loss in Germany, a decision was suddenly made. That was the juncture at which I had conversations in that week in the wake of the loss and where I got the indications of where the team's head was at. So it took a long time to build to that point, and all the things that informed that decision that had been made at that point weren't just losing to the Commanders and the Raiders and the Colts and throw in any other team, the Cowboys or the Saints. It was drafting. It was the quarterback situation. It's coaching development. It's drafting. <laughs> Go back around. You know, it's Jacoby Myers. It's you name it. So when I say I don't know that the decision is final, what would it take to change the minds that were pretty well set on the direction at the end of the season, they'd have to finish with a ridiculous flourish. And I think additionally, Bill Belichick would have to present a cogent plan going forward, which demonstrates how this rebuild is going to be different from the one that took place in 2021 and 2022. How will you craft it differently? How will you treat this quarterback as opposed to the last quarterback? How much will you yield in terms of your head coaching, excuse me, your personnel responsibilities? Basically, he's down 28-3. to The only games that they can possibly win are ones that don't mean anything anymore. We've seen a demonstrated pattern to what's been going on at the ends of seasons since 2019. 19, 20, 21, 22, and now 23, despite the win over Pittsburgh. They're doing another face plant. This one's a season-long face plant. So I just think it would be whipped cream on a turd at this point. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, dresses it up a little bit. Uh, so, so when it comes to Gerard Mayo, and we're talking to Tommy Curran, NBC Sports boss, and he joins us every Thursday here on WEEI. It's, it would taste better. It would. So There's a flourish right there. When it comes to uh, Gerard Mayo, it, it felt to me when the statement was put out, and I'm editorializing here a bit, uh, in the offseason, the commitment to, to bringing back Gerard Mayo, uh, it felt to me like Mayo was the head coach in waiting. And now it feels like that's in question. I don't know if I'm reading that properly or not. Uh, put a percentage on, if they're done with Bill, put a percentage on Mayo being the next guy. Mm. Speculation completely, okay? Mm-hmm. Sure. Let's preface that before it gets social media out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Specu- still, Speculation percentage. My speculation percentage on the likelihood Gerard Mayo is the planned successor 90 percent 90 percent you said speculation yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's just that's high, that's higher than i expected your speculation to be that's all that's a high that's a high the number intention all along the intention was as i've said in the past bill's contract expires in 2025 gerard's contract expires in 2025 I think that there was a symbiosis to that anyway, and the hope was that in 2024 and 2025, Bill Belichick would continue as a great coach, rebuild the team, they would get the Shula record, and then you have a passing of the torch. The decline of the team in general and the personnel on the roster has been so drastically jarring that I'm not surprised, though I have not been told this, but enough, another people, enough other people have speculated it, including Dan Graziano for ESPN. He speculates that it's not a done deal, and Kraft might look at the entire situation and wonder if he has to address all of it, which would not surprise me in the least, given the drastic nature of how it's declined. That would necessitate blowing up their succession plan that they've had in place. And when you say, Jonesy, that Robert Kraft seemed to indicate that Gerard had a future here, he literally called him the heir apparent. He said he would be an heir apparent. We have a number of people, though. 
So if you want to dredge that one up, that ain't bad to have. Put Ryan on that <laughs> from so, the owners' meeting. <laughs> Tommy, if if Gerard is the head coach next year. Do you get a, any sense of the confidence in Bill O'Brien as the offensive coordinator when you're in a situation that you may be bringing in a rookie quarterback, maybe a top three draft pick from to be your next quarterback, that that would be who's shepherding that quarterback through their first couple seasons here? Albert Breer said that, and I trust Albert and the people he talks to, that Mayo would be comfortable with Bill O'Brien working continually, continuing to work with Bill O'Brien. So that being the case, I defer to Albert's reporting on that. As for whether or not Bill O'Brien deserves another chance back, which is probably the overarching question for people, I'd say that the craft most likely would err on the side of, look, we convinced the guy to come up for a year. It was a broken year with a quarterback who'd been, you know, a little bit screwed up the previous year. The team wasn't good enough. The roster wasn't good enough. The kid had no protection. We traded away his best wide receiver, or actually didn't trade him. We lost his best wide receiver in Jacoby Myers. And I don't know how much of it we can put on Bill, so it would be unfair to him to convince him to come up, to court him, to get him all the way up the stairs and then kick him back down again. So I would imagine that the feeling would be that Mayo and O'Brien become the people to – take over in 2024 and i really truly believe that a collaborative mike lombardi talked about this on mcafee today the collaborative approach post bill is something that i would put a large expectation on a lot of people are going to have a voice and there will be greater checks and balances all right, he is Tommy Curran, NBC Sports Boston. Nobody more plugged in. He joins us every Thursday at 3.30 here on Jones and Mego with Arkan. Uh, Tommy, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. No trouble. I hope you feel better. <laughs> yeah, I will. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right home. I'm going to get some ibuprofen. I'm going to get uh, some, some throat lozenges. That's what I'm going to be doing after the show. Thank you, Dr. Curran. Damn the call. Damn the call works great. Okay. Uh, Tom Curran has all our guests. Joins us on the Harbor One Thank Hotline. Thank you, Tommy.